All right, so right out of the gate, I'm not messing around. I'm going to just show you how to get this mod working because I know I'm going to have people comment how to get it working. And just in case I forget timestamps, because, you know, admittingly, I'm kind of stupid. I'm just going to put it right at the start of the video so that you know how to get this to work. So first off, you want to download the Talvi, I don't know how to pronounce it, Talvi Sota mod. I Fucking hell. Don't go on the Steam Workshop because it is technically classified as its own sort of game or DLC, I suppose. Then you want to launch the game from the mod, and then when you're on the actually, you know, in game, press F3, open WWTE, okay? It stands for Winter War Territories. Then you want to enter the map name. Now they are long, they are confusing, and you might need to alt tab a couple of times and then finish off the words. And yeah, I, I wasn't able to get all of them to work, and I even tried entering, you know, WWSU for supremacy to see if there were supremacy maps, and I, I didn't get a couple of them to work, but most of them do work. But once the map is loaded, you just want to type in, well, press F3 again, and type in add bots and insert any amount. So obviously, you know, if you've got a crappy processor, don't put too many bots, because you're just going to become unbearable. And you know, speaking of bots, you know, I had fun with them, but the funny thing was, they were actually able to give me better marks when I was commander than actual humans, so uh, that's something to think about, squad leaders. Alright, but now I just want to talk about the mod itself. So for a while, people have told me to get the Talvisoda mod for Rising Storm to Vietnam, and honestly, I put it off for a while. I don't know why, but I did it, and I seriously regret not trying this out sooner, because this mod is, it's fantastic. It's like I'm playing a whole new game, but also sort of like retaining all the good and yeah, bad things about Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. I'd honestly consider this more of like an expansion. Like I would pay upwards of like 10 Australian dollars for this mod. Uh, it sure as hell is better than the Green Army Men DLC, because if you if you don't know, in Green Army Men, you can only use infantry roll unless you pay to get the other classes, and yes, that does include Commander, and it's a, it's a common thing to get bullied if you paid for the Green Army Men DLC and you're using anything but the infantry role. But anyways, this mod itself is fantastic, and it's a shame that I can't get onto any service to play it, or, I mean, for, for starters, one, I don't know how to get onto a server that plays it, two, a lot of comments on the Steam page say, oh, you know, rip, this was the best mod, and three, I can guarantee you that even if there were servers, they'd probably be in, like, America or something, I'd be getting heaps of ping, but I mean, hey, I, I'm okay with that. I'm, this is probably one of the few instances where I'm like, you know what, I can cope with the high ping as long as I'm having fun and not playing competitively. But yes, all the gameplay and everything you're seeing is done with bots, but I mean, I still had fun. Sometimes if you play RS2 so much, you become bored of it, and you know, the same maps, same guns. Sometimes you want to play RS2, but you, know, you also want to spice a couple of things up, you know? And this mod does it perfectly. Now, my initial impressions was that, you know, I thought, you know, I was getting Red Orchestra 2, except putting it into RS2, but turns out this isn't set during, oh, well, actually, technically, is it set? Yeah, it is set during World War II, but look, when I first started, I got, I got some, you know, Red Orchestra 2 vibes, because it had the really, you know, dreary and dark feeling to it, that, that, that's sort of the impression that I got, but I mean, my two favorite things to do were, one, get in a tank and run people over and just bomb the living shit out of them, the tanks do come with armor piercing rounds, but I'm positive the Finns don't get tanks, unless you, unless they're able to penetrate walls, but I mean, I didn't really get an opportunity to test them out because there aren't really a whole lot of buildings. It's mainly just forest. Now the tanks are, you know, they're, they're really good because, you know, they, they are created in a way where, you know, one person drives and the other person shoots and loads. So, you know, I'd assume you probably need to coordinate with the person that you're with. And, you know, aiming was a little difficult. It was similar to like War Thunder where you can like look around really fast and the cannon will go to the position where, you know, the, the cursor is and it moves really slowly. I, I don't really like that. I prefer to be able to like move the, you know, the vision with the turret. That's what I personally prefer. And you could maybe press, you know, the alt key or something to manually rotate the turret without actually moving the turret, if you know what I mean. The second thing that I love was being a Finnish sniper. It, are they called Finnish or is it called Finn sniper? No, it, it, they're called Finnish. Pretending to be a Finnish sniper. Surely I'm not the only one who sat in the snow with a scopeless Mosin Nagant and pretending to be, fuck, had th this guy. I can't, I can't pronounce that. No. Yeah, but you know, you guys already know that I'm, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that, and he's basically the Giga Chad of sniping, literally. I, I don't know how else to describe him. 
I just love pretending to be him, even though I was playing with bots. Now, the third thing that I actually loved, I know I said two, but I, I don't care. The third thing was commander abilities. When I caught in, you know, the recon plane, I was expecting the American scout plane to sort of come in and, you know, do the rounds, the figure eight, whatever. But no, it's actually a unique and custom plane that's been modeled to fly around. And this also counts, you know, if you want to call in like a, like a bombing run, I, I assume it's like the camera bomb, all right? These are TB3s, I believe. I've played Ill 29046. I know they're called the TB something. I'm just going to say the TB2 or TB3. But they come in and they literally bomb the fucking map. And it's it's so much fun. It's so cool and unique. Oh, well, not really unique, but you know, it's, it's just cool, basically. Now, one thing I want to talk about is clothing. The Finns get white clothing and they can be pretty hard to see. This is even, you know, there's this one costume called White Death. And that looks just so fucking sick. But the Soviets don't get white. They get dark colored clothing. I don't know who back then decided that this was a good idea because I was spotting them from a mile away. I also got a texture glitch unless this is, you know, some special camo that I wasn't told about. But really, you know, no other complaints. But the thing that I want to talk about is the maps. Now, I have said this time and time again, people want and well, should I say wanted because unfortunately nothing's going to be getting added into the game anymore because some smart person was like you know what one of our most successful games you know rising storm tv and i'm let's just stop development it's like why but I mean, another thing is there was this map i forgot what the map was called but it was a really good looking map there was an anti-tank cannon and it fires armor piercing rounds this is good because i'd assume it would be to use to you know counter the soviet tanks and also on the same map there were like these sort of mounted machine guns the similar to how you'd see the browning on let's say dong ha except you're not not as exposed or in a bunker and you also have sort of like this protective plate i don't know how effective that would be but i mean hey that that was still pretty damn cool it actually gave a purpose to mount the machine guns excluding the dushka okay the the douche is good, but I'm talking about the 50 cal, right? The browning. Because, I mean, it's kind of useless. It doesn't really have a place in the game. As soon as you use it, you just target practice for literally anyone. All right, but another cool feature that was the skis. You can actually get skis. I'm not sure if the Soviets can get it. I didn't actually try that out, but I'll probably throw it up on screen if I did get it to work. But as the Finns, you can actually use the skis. And it, it was a little bit janky at first. You know, it's a little bit, little bit hard. But, I mean, I'm not complaining. This was unique. This was fun. Because, obviously, you know, if you learn about, you know, the Soviet Finn War, you know, they, they use skis to get around, you know, cross-country skiing and shit, and, you know, it was good that they implemented this into the game. But the last thing I want to talk about is the weapons. Now, most of the weapons are just skins over current weapons, and some have had some features tweaked. I say this because the SVT in this game, right, has the same sound as the L1A1, but I swear on my life, they have different recoil patterns. You also get the, fuck, how do you pronounce that? Sumi? Suomi? fucking i don't know what that is but it just sounds like the ppsh now i'm not complaining you know like can't imagine how hard it would be to actually fucking gun sounds because i mean look the audio the voice lines the fins have you know fully voiced lines you can taunt people in finnish you can taunt people in soviet or so soviet sort of language you can taunt people in russian and stuff that's cool i'm glad they went through the effort to do that instead of you know just having it sort of come up as like a text thing or you know not being played there are different mods and variants there are like older ones from like the 19th century where it has a bigger MOA and then you got newer Muslims which have a smaller MOA. I don't know how this like affects the gunplay because it's like why would I use the older one when I could just use the newer one? But I mean yeah to sum everything up uh, it's just a very good mod and if you haven't tried it out nothing's really stopping you. It's for free. It's only like a couple of gigs download. If you just want to try something new out and if you're bored of Rising Storm 2 Vietnam but you still sort of want to play Rising Storm 2 Vietnam I suppose you could just give this mod a try. It's it's fun. I can guarantee you'll play it for a bit and you'll, you'll have a good time. But uh, anyways, I'm going to end today's video there. I hope you guys did enjoy it because if you did, please do consider leaving a like, subscribe, and share the video with your friends. Anyways, my name is Tantu and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.